Adding large numbers in your head when you don't even have a piece of paper can be difficult. I have a method for you that will make it way easier. Just make all the numbers you need to add a multiple of 10. Let's take two three-digit numbers as an example. 543 plus 339. Uh -oh. Even adding these numbers on paper can be challenging, but rounding them up will make it much more manageable. In this case, 543 is rounded up to become 550, and 339 turns into 340. Now, adding these two is not much of a problem, so let's do it. 550 plus 340 equals 890. Cool, but that's not the answer to the original equation. To determine that, we need to remember mm -hmm. how much we added to the initial numbers. That would be easy. We just need to subtract the original numbers from the rounded up ones. The results look like this. 550 minus 543 will be 7, and 340 minus 339 will be 1. Now add 7 and 1, and you'll get 8. That's how much extra we have in our rounded up sum. So the only thing left to do now is subtract 8 from 890, and you'll get your final result. 890 minus 8 is 882, and the answer is 543 plus 339 Woohoo! is 882. Finding any percentage mm -hmm. that can be divided by 5 of any number using just your head is actually no big deal if you know your times tables well enough. Say you hmm? see a 5% discount to something you want to buy in a store, and you'd like oh. to know the exact amount of money you're going to save. Let's count. Let's assume your purchase without the discount is $142. You need to determine 5% of that sum. First, move the decimal point left by one digit, which would give you 14.2. Now divide this number by 2, and you'll get 7.1, which is also the answer to your question. The principle is hmm? simple. Finding 10% of any amount is easy, because you only need to move the decimal point left by one place, which we did in our first step. And 5% is 10% divided by 2, right? So that's why we divided the resulting sum by 2 as well. Finding any percentage that's a multiplier of 5 can be done in a more or less similar way. Let's take 35% of 324 as another example. Again, move the decimal point left by one place, getting 32.4. Now, you need to do two different actions with this number. First, multiply it by 3, which will get you 97.2. Second, divide the same number by 2, resulting in 16.2. And now, all that's left to do is add these numbers. 97.2 plus 16.2 equals 113.4. That's your answer. 35% of 324 is 113.4. Let me explain in case you hmm? didn't get all these calculations. First things first, you divide the number by 10 and move the decimal point left. Then you need to multiply your number by 3.5. It's not easy to do it in your head, so you separate the numbers before and after the decimal point. First, you multiply your number by 3 and then by 0.5. To multiply any number by 0.5, you actually need to divide it by 2, since 0.5 is half of your number. And then, when you're done with all the multiplications, just add the results to get your initial number multiplied by 3.5. This might sound complex at first, but if you practice this method a bit, you'll find it very easy to apply. Now let's get away from complex calculations and have some fun instead. You've been told otherwise, but you can prove that uh -oh. 2 plus 2 might actually equal 5. Here's the simplest method to do so. Uh, disclaimer, don't try to do this in your math class. So, we have the universal truth that 0 equals 0. Now, 0 can be a result of subtracting a number from itself. Let's take numbers 4 and 10 for our case, and we'll have this equation. 4 minus 4 equals 10 minus 10. Taking it one step further, 4 can be written as 2 to the power of 2, and 10 can be written as 2 times 5. In the end, we get this equation. 2 to the power of 2 minus 2 to the power of 2 equals 2 times 5 minus 2 times 5. Next, in math terms, we can simplify it by using brackets, and here's what we get. 
2 minus 2 times 2 plus 2 equals 5 times 2 minus 2. Again, according to the rules of math, we can cancel 2 minus 2 on both sides, and the result will be 2 plus 2 equals 5. Yeah, that's how you prove the impossible. Math can do incredible things. Hmm? Okay, getting back to real math tricks. Squaring numbers after 10 can be a pain, but there's an easy way to square any two-digit number that ends in 5. Let's take 45 as an example. First, you need to multiply the first digit by itself plus 1. That is, 4 plus 1 is 5. So you need to multiply 4 by 5, getting 20. Now add 25 at the end, and you get 2,025. That's it. Here's your answer. 45 squared is 2,025. Check it with a calculator if you don't believe me. Hmm? A simple way to multiply any, and I mean any at all, number by 5 has probably never been mentioned to you at school. There's a slight difference in methods depending on whether the number is even or odd. Let's start with even numbers. Say you have to multiply 3,566 by 5. First, divide the number by 2, getting 1,758. Now add a zero to it, and you've got your answer. 17,580. Now let's try odd numbers. We'll take 2,463 as an example. First of all, subtract 1 from the number, getting 2,462. Now divide it by 2 again resulting in 1,231. And then, instead of a zero, put a five at the end, which will get you 12,315. This is your answer. 2,463 times five equals 12,315. Hmm? All right, all right, now I've got a puzzle for you. See if you can solve it in 10 seconds. You have an equation made of matchsticks, which reads two equals six. You need to move just one matchstick to make the equation true. The timer is set. Again, this is a puzzle, so there's no conventional solution to it. If you move one matchstick from the left side and put it so that its middle is on top of the one on the right side, you'll get a square root symbol. And thus, the equation is true. One equals Yahoo! the square root of one. Ah, but there's also a second solution. You can move one of the matches forming a V in the right part so that they form an X instead. This way, you'll get 11 written in Arabic numerals that equals 11 Yahoo! written in Roman numerals. Problem solved. Let's have another math riddle, shall we? A book costs one dollar, plus half its price. How much does the book cost? I'll give you 10 seconds again, or just pause the video if you need more time. To solve this riddle, you need to build an equation where B is the cost of the book, and you have to find it. The equation will look like this, b equals 1 plus b over 2, because to find b, you need to add 1 and half the b. To make it simple, let's write b as b over 2 plus b over 2 in the left side, getting b over 2 plus b over 2 equals 1 plus b over 2. Now we can transfer b over 2 from the right side over to the left and get b over 2 plus b over 2 minus b over 2 equals 1. Subtracting b over 2 from itself leaves us with b over 2 equals 1. So the only thing left to do is multiply 1 by 2, and you'll get b. The answer is b equals 2. Now, if you solve this puzzle on your own, you just might get to Oxford University. In the finals of a logical game, two players are contesting for the prize. The prize itself is placed under one of five objects you can see on the screen. Sheila was privately told the shape of the object under which the prize was hidden. Colin was privately told the color of that object. Both players are mathematicians and use perfectly logical reasoning to find the answer. 
and either of them knows that the other was told the shape or the color of the object. The host asks them, do either of you know where the prize is? The players say no. The host then asks, do you know now? They both shake their heads. The host asks again, do you know now? And the players answer yes in unison. How can this be? And where is the prize? Pause the video if you want to try to crack this puzzle on your own, or watch further to find out the answer. So Sheila was told the shape of the object, so for her, it would be either the red or green triangle, either the green or purple circle, or the only square there is, the red one. Colin was told the color of the object, so for him, it's either the red triangle or square, either the green triangle or circle, or the only purple circle there is. When the host asked whether either of them knew where the prize was, and they answered no, they both got new information. For Sheila, it was definitely not the square, and since Colin didn't know the answer either, it wasn't the purple circle. Colin used the same reasoning. So they both eliminated two options. After the second question, neither of them still knew the answer, and they got new info again. Sheila was left with two triangles and one circle. She knew the shape of the object, so if she still didn't know where the prize was, it couldn't be the circle. And Colin was left with two green and one red shape. Since he knew the color but didn't know the answer, it couldn't be the red one. Thus, two more objects were eliminated for both. And finally, after the third time the host asked them about the prize, they knew for certain that it was the green triangle, using only their initial information.